Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today I'm going to be talking about the mixed range of the Chevrolet Equinox EV and that it's actually not too bad. Let's get into it. So if you're watching this video, I hope you've already seen my range test video where I range test the Chevy Equinox EV at 70 miles per hour. And I got a result that I wasn't super pleased with. I wasn't upset with it, but I was just hoping for more because the EPA estimate was 319. The Cadillac Lyric has gotten more than its EPA estimate. And I was thinking, well, maybe the Equinox could do it too. And then it didn't deliver. So... After that video, I just feel like I maybe scared some people about the range, and I want to go over a few things just so you have a really good understanding. Maybe you have driven EVs for a long time and you get this. Maybe you're new to EVs and you thought you are going to get 319 miles and now you're driving 70, 75, 80 miles an hour on the highway and you're not getting anything close to that. Well, hopefully this video can help you out a little bit. So first thing, let's go over everything that can affect your range. So the speed at which you travel, right? That's why we do the 70 mile per hour, but people also drive slower and people drive faster. And a lot of people, they just commute and maybe they only average 40 miles per hour. And maybe some people, they only do highway, uh, highway driving and they average 70 miles per hour. So speed is a huge factor. Elevation, as you go up and down, that will affect the range because it takes more power to go up an incline and then it obviously with the EV you can get some power back when you go down. Uh, so elevation is very important. The weight of the vehicle will also affect and how much load you have in the vehicle will affect the range. Weather and those specific factors being the temperature, whether it's hot or cold will impact the battery and the battery's ability to use the energy that is stored. Precipitation, when it rains or snows, it's going to uh, reduce traction and make the car have to work a little bit harder, I guess is the best way to explain it. Thusly, increasing how much energy your car has to use when driving. And lastly, wind. And this kind of plays a little bit in with speed as well. But if there is wind, it's going to affect your car, especially if, it, if you have a headwind where the, head, the wind is coming towards you. That's going to impact it a lot. Sometimes a tailwind, a wind going with you, can actually help out your efficiency. Moving on, uh, we have driving style slash habits. Another thing is drafting behind vehicles. So I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but if you sit behind a car or especially like a big truck, it's going to move the wind out of the way, which will help with your range and your efficiency a little bit. Tires, uh, be it whether your tires are worn, whether your tires run through right uh, air pressure, whether your tires are, you change the, um, the tread pattern of the tire, all these things with tire can affect it. Or maybe you decide you wanna put bigger wheels on and now you've got bigger tires, that can all impact. Modifications to the vehicle, I would never do this, but maybe you add some something, a, a tail, I don't know. I'm uh, deflectors. This is not my thing, but those could affect your, your range positively or negatively. And then lastly, battery degradation. Obviously, as your battery loses capacity over time, you're going to have less range, right? So, so there are the things that can, can kind of affect range. I wanted to go over them quick so you all could have a good idea. Now, when I did the range test, the 70 mile per hour range test on the 2024 Chevy Equinox EV, again, I have the front wheel drive 3LT trim. Um, I ran it twice because I thought my test was bad. And uh, in the first result, I got 264 miles. And then I ran it again and I got 268.5 miles. So almost the same result. Uh, so it kind of solidified that my test is, is not a terrible test and it's valid. And um, I was a little disappointed because I was hoping to get around 290, 300 miles. I never thought I was going to get 319, but it would have been nice. So then I put that video out. Maybe I scared some people, but the majority of us are going to be driving, commuting, not going 70 miles per hour constantly, right? We're going to have a bunch of different speeds at which we're going. For instance, for my commute, the majority of my commute is anywhere uh, from 25 to like 50. 55 miles tops per hour, miles per hour tops. So 
You know what I mean? So 70 miles per hour test isn't even relevant for me. So today I, I went down to shoot a video um, of a charging session on a Tesla supercharger and I was I had this crazy idea. I'm like, what if I just do, do the range to and from and like see what I get, see what happens, see what kind of information I could uh, present to people. So um, this result, first off, it's not scientific in any way, shape or form, but I just drove like I would drive um, I did follow the speed limit just because obviously I want to be safe. If there was an occasion where I felt unsafe and I needed to maybe go a little bit faster to go with the flow of traffic so I didn't get run off the road, I did do that, but that only happened like one time. And um, so it's, yeah, like I said, it's not scientific, but this is going to give a good perspective of, I'm calling it like a mixed range, if you will. And obviously everyone's range is going to be different because of the route you drive and the way you drive and everything like that. But this could be at least helpful to some people who are trying to figure out what kind of range they could expect on their use case for their vehicle. So some of the speeds I went were from um, stop and go traffic all the way to 65 miles per hour. I even encountered some rain and I'm just like I said, it's not scientific. So it is what it is. And the, this is just kind of what I got. And uh, the last thing sorry, I want to say is I did go 281 miles for this full test. So obviously that's a lot longer than a lot of your all's commutes. But I think it's still valid and um, you know you could shrink it and it would, it would still make sense. So this is just a good picture, right? Okay, so don't anyone go post this and say, this is the range. So first things first, just driving out to the supercharger, I drove 184.5 miles. I actually had to drive a little bit more because I needed to get the battery down to 10%, but that was a loop, so it wouldn't affect anything uh, that much. I used 50% of the battery and I drove for four hours and 18 minutes. It felt like an eternity. Uh, I don't know how people can be in a car longer than that. Like two hours is my max. But anyways, it averaged four miles per kilowatt hour, which is awesome. It's way better than the 2.9 I got on the 70 mile per hour range test. And the car reported to me that it used 45.1 kilowatt hours of energy. I went and did all the math. And the average speed for the whole trip was 42.9 miles per hour. So if you're someone where that's about your average speed, then this information might be really helpful to you. If your average is a little bit higher, you could expect a little bit lower. Or if your average is a little bit lower, you can expect a little bit higher. Uh, moving on, I drove back from the supercharger. Uh, full disclosure, I went from the supercharger, I got stuck in some heavy rain traffic and then I stopped to get food and I didn't think about that with all my tracking. So I did have to kind of like figure out some data. So I had to add 10 minutes to the travel time. Anyways, moving on, it was 281.2 miles uh, and that was 78% uh, state of charge used in total for the whole trip, not, the, not just the trip back. The second part of the trip was two hours and 38 minutes and that made it a 6.93 hours I had converted here. So about seven hours of driving total today. And the consumption average was 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And I again had to calculate this because I messed up the, using the trip thing. Uh, it was 72.1 kilowatt hours used. And again, that's an estimate. And the average speed for the whole trip was 40.5 miles per hour. So again, only a three mile per hour difference. So anyone where your um, average speed for your commute is about that, you can expect this kind of consumption-ish, uh, right? Obviously all those other factors, speed, elevation, weather, they all play a factor, but this was about a 82 to 86 degree day. Um, I had rain, I had stop and go traffic. Um, so there you go. So it was a nice, nice little experiment today. Now, what does this mean for full range of the car? Now, most of us are probably not gonna charge up to 100% because it's not good for our battery, but it's just good to know what would the full range be if I was getting this kind of consumption. So I actually did two different um, calculations. I did one with the 3.9, which was my full trip, and then I did the 4.0, which was the half trip, just to see what the numbers would be. And I'm calculating based off of two different battery sizes. So this car is advertised to have an 85 kilowatt hour battery, but every test I've done and also um, getting some 
very little bit of uh, information from the car via an OBD. I have 89.7 kilowatt hours. So actually I have almost five kilowatt hours more than advertised. Uh, so I'll use both of those numbers. Um, I'm not sure if all the cars have 89.7 or if it just kind of depends, I don't know. But anyways, uh, for the 89.7 kilowatt hour battery capacity at 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, the total range would be 349.83 miles, which is way higher than the EPA. If it was the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, the same consumption, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, that would be 331 miles, which is still more than the EPA. So for the majority of driving that a lot of us are gonna do, it's gonna be better than the EPA, which is good. And this is true of most EVs. My Kona was rated at 258, but a lot of times I get 300, 318, 318 miles. So I'm not really shocked by this, but maybe this is something new to you. If it is, put it down in the comments. Love to hear if you learned something today. Now for the, uh, the four miles per kilowatt hour consumption at the 89.7 uh, kilowatt hours for my battery pack, that would be 358.8 miles, so about um, nine, 10-ish more miles than the 3.9. And then the 85 kilowatt hour advertised at four miles per kilowatt hour would be 340 miles. So again, all that is above EPA for the average driving. Um, like I said, if you drive faster, your average uh, speed is faster, you know, you're not gonna get that. It's gonna be less than that. If it's slower, you might get more. If you only crawl around town or you live in the city, you might, who knows, you could get 400 miles. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but you could definitely do um, a lot better. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting. And I, I hope this um, gives everyone a little bit more perspective when they see a 70 mile per hour range test and then they um, maybe don't drive 70 miles per hour and they're like, well, I got this range. Yeah, you did because of all these reasons and that's completely valid. Um, but when you run a test and you're trying to compare it to other cars, you need to try and keep things as similar as possible and having a constant speed is really the only, only way to compare apples to apples cars. And even at that point, the temperature and the weather and the wind and everything could make things not completely the same. So I hope you all found this video helpful. I thought it was interesting. I'm really excited to share it with you all. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, please remember to give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on X. All of those things really help my channel. You watching the videos, you subscribing, super chats. If, hey, if you want to get crazy or follow me X, they all help the channel so I can bring content to you all, which is really fun and enjoyable for me. And lastly, if you haven't already, please follow my sister channel, EV Charging Site Reviews. I have a bunch of videos I need to work on to get up there, but I have a bunch of stuff on I-70, I-95, uh, some stuff out in Missouri that kind of is off of 70, uh, but that helps people know what they're getting into when they go to a charging site. So again, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.